First nerve is the olfactory nerve. Testing is rarely required in pediatric exams unless the child complains of loss of taste or loss of smell or has a facial field defect or has a frontal tumor or has had surgery. Basically, the idea is to just offer a, a, not a very unpleasant smell, bring it from say the periphery and in pediatrics we we'll prefer um, smells like vin uh, vinegar or mint. You just bring it from the side and then ask the child if he smells anything new and that's fairly straightforward. So the olfactory nerve is just a question of offering a smell and the child telling you whether he, can pick, he or she can pick it up and that's the olfactory nerve. The second nerve is assessed in three areas. First, you want to know the visual acuity of this child, that is how acutely this, uh, how this child sees and that is used uh, tested by standardized um, um, instruments. So you can have a Snelling chart, you can have a Stika chart, or, or the Songsen silver silver test, and these are for visual acuity. The next component of the second nerve test is visual fields, and this is an important test in pediatrics. And the idea is to bring either a bright little pin or an object from the periphery, and where I ask the child to see that. So the idea is that you bring either a bright object or a pin or even your white little fingers from the periphery and you ask the child to respond if he sees your fingers. So as the, your own fingers come into your view, you expect the child to also respond. So you do with one eye and then you come and do the other eye and then you determine whether what kind of visual field effect this child has we have different types depending on what you see whether you call it the bitemporal hemianopia and things we shall not go into that detail the third component of your second nerve examination is phonoscopy and we expect medical students and postgraduate students for that matter always to look at the back of the eye if you can get a chance so Fundoscopy involves um, also getting down to the level of the child and usually if it's your right eye you're looking at looking using, um, using an ophthalmoscope in your right hand you attempt to look at the back of the child's eyes and that is um, a bit of fundoscopy where you want to document whether there's optic atrophy, papilledema or anything else, a cherry red spot or anything else that you may find. These are the three important things you may pick up from fundoscopy. And that completes the second nerve. The third, fourth and sixth nerves control eye movement. And that is the next system to examine. Pulses of these nerves are not too common, but they are very important to recognize. Um, important causes of pulses of these nerves may following meningitis, that is post-meningitis. In pediatrics, the most common cause is um, cerebral palsy. You also follow tumors in the brain and you also follow when embarrassing. So these are usually the causes of um, pulses of the third, fourth and sixth nerves. Um, a pulse of the third nerve is very important and usually the eye is said to be deviated is down and out and on the side affected the pupil may appear normal or larger than normal that would usually demonstrate uh, third nerve pulse so this eye may fall down and out as we say it may just lie at this corner the pupil may be normal or larger than normal 